In this program, we are going to uh, be programming a classic sorting algorithm uh, called bubble sort, uh, which isn't ter terribly efficient, but it, it's, uh, it's a good one to sort of practice some, uh, some elements of working with arrays. So uh, as you can see, what I've got set up is um, a method already in place uh, that is designed to uh, just print the numbers that we have in an array and because we're going to be creating numbers from zero to 99, uh, if they are fewer than uh, two digits, so if they're less than 10, uh, we're gonna get an extra zero here. So um, if you don't have this already, you may want to pause the video and include that before we get started. Okay, that being said, let's get started. So um, in the main program, I'm gonna create a relatively small um, array um, because um, when you're working with a small chunk of data, it doesn't really matter uh, how, uh, like what, which algorithm you use to do the sorting um, because it'll be very quickly uh, finished anyway. So uh, let's start with an array of uh, 15 integers, and I'm going to set these randomly. So for int i is zero, while i is less than uh, array dot length. Um, we'll continue through this way. And then all we're going to do is we're gonna set array element i is going to be a random number math.random um, times 100. There we go. Uh, so that'll give us a, a random number from 0 to 99, and there can be some, uh, some duplication or triplication, I suppose, uh, in this array, and we won't really care about that. Okay, so let's see what we are working with before we get started. So I'm gonna run this. Um, so we've got a jumble of essentially uh, two-digit numbers, um, and what I want to do is I want to put them in order from smallest to highest, and I'm going to use a bubble sort in order to do this. So um, here's what bubble sort is going to be doing, is um, it is going to start at the beginning, and it's going to compare these two elements at a time. If they're out of order, it's going to switch them. So 12 is less than 30, so it's fine with this and nothing is going to happen. Then it's going to evaluate 30 and 69. Uh, both of these are in a regular order, so uh, it's going to leave these alone. Now, uh, it's going to do its first work here on 69 and 63. Because 63 is smaller than 69, what's going to happen is that these two elements are going to switch places with each other. Um, then a 69 will have moved here and it's smaller than 85, so it's not going to care about that. Um, so anyway, it's going to go through and evaluate pairs over and over and over again until it gets to the end. Once it's done that, it's going to start over at the beginning and work its way through over and over and over again until it goes from the beginning to the end without making any swaps. So uh, let's see how we can do this. Um, I am going to create, uh, now I, I never like to have, um, you know, my, my methods have the same name as the program, so I'm going to use uh, bub sort here. And then I'm going to print a final result here, uh, which is going to be another uh, print of the array. And now it should be in, um, in a sorted order. OK. So before we start this, one of the one of the key activities that bubble sort does is it does a tremendous amount of swapping of elements within the array. So I am going to make um, I'm going to make a swap method, which is going to handle this. So what it's going to do is I'm going to uh, be receiving uh, an array. 
and I'm gonna receive an integer position one and an integer position two, and it's going to swap those two positions in the array. So in order to do this, I need a temporary value, uh, and then I'm gonna use that to temporarily store position one from the array. Now that it's stored and safe, uh, I am going to make position one become equal to uh, the position I'm swapping it with, and then I'm going to um, have array position two uh, become equal to that temporary value that I had. Okay, so this is going to accomplish the swap, uh, and we're gonna be doing an awful lot of these, so it's an important one to include here. Um, Okay, so now um, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make my bubble sort. Public static void. Now I called it bub sort, of course. And I'm gonna get my array here. Uh, this one's void because we're gonna leverage the fact that uh, any changes to the elements within an array uh, are going to stick, so I don't need to return the array at the end of this. Um, now, one thing that is important here is we need a Boolean value, remember that's true or false, to check to see if there was a swap on a pass through the array. So if it goes all the way from the beginning of the array to the end of the array, that means that uh, it is essentially in lowest to highest order because it didn't need to swap any you know, higher and lower elements uh, to be in the correct order. So uh, once that's done, um, once uh, it's false, I suppose, then we can stop, stop our process. So uh, I'm gonna keep doing while did swap, which essentially is the same as writing uh, while did swap equals true uh, repeat. So if we did swap, then keep looping. Okay, so inside the loop, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna make did swap false. So until we encounter a place where we make a swap, uh, did swap is going to be false. Um, now what I wanna do is uh, this is gonna be for loop, int i is zero while i is less than the array dot length. Now what we have to do is we have to put a minus one here as well, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, evaluating each element with the next one in the array. So if we ever actually get to the last position in the array, I don't wanna compare that to an element that is like after the last position, um, because that will obviously make the program crash. Um, Uh, all right, so now what we need to do is we're gonna check to see, check if swap is necessary. So here, um, if array element i uh, is larger than the next one. So if the element we're looking at is actually bigger than the one that follows it, then I need to make a swap. So uh, we're gonna see if it's bigger than array element i plus one. If this is the case, then I need to reverse uh, the order because I always wanna make, make sure that this is smaller than this. Uh, if they're equal, also, I don't need to swap them. It's only in the case where an element is larger than the one that follows it. Okay, so now the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna perform the swap. So I'm gonna swap and I need to send it my array and I need to send it the two positions that I'm swapping, which is gonna be i and i plus one. Uh, and now, because I did a swap, I'm going to make did swap become true. Okay, 
So now uh, that's the entire program, which is crazy, uh, you know, that we can sort an entire array just with this little code. But essentially, it just swaps over and over again. And we're leveraging the fact that a computer can do these like small repetitive tasks unbelievably quickly. Um, so let's see if we get a sorted result and then we'll see uh, what is happening here. Okay, so this is the original. This is the final. So you can see that it is now in order. But what's actually happening here? So what I want to do is uh, just to test it out, uh, I'm going to do a print nums here on my array. So what it'll do is it'll print it every time it finishes a pass. So a little bit more output this time. And what you'll see is every time you pass, at least one largest element ends up at the top. So you can see this 99 here. Uh, by the time it's done its first pass, 99, which is the largest value, will always end up at the end. Uh, here, 97 is the largest value, so it ends up at the end, and then 88, 87. Each pass moves one largest element to the end. Now, to get an even closer picture of what's happening, let's turn this into uh, a comment, and I'm going to uh, now print all of the swaps. So if I run this again, take a look at what is happening. Lots more output this time. Uh, so you can see this 77, which uh, is not the largest, but it's pretty big, uh, is going to go on a little journey until we get to this 95, which is the largest thing, and it gets picked up. 95, and now 97 gets determined that it is the largest, and it's going to go on its journey and then eventually end up at the end. So if you print this out, you can kind of get a sense for like how the elements are bubbling to the top uh, as you sort this. So uh, bubble sort's not great, but if you know what you're doing, it, it sure is very fast and uh, easy to program, which is why it's actually still used uh, despite its inefficiency.